So as you know, I'm a big fan. I'm almost obsessed with double-breasted suits because I believe, I didn't make the precise count, but I believe it's probably close to 70% of my personal wardrobe. And this is the photo of Massimo Cifonelli, not Lorenzo. Massimo, his cousin, I remember very well. In 2008, I was about to do my second suit. After this suit that I'm wearing is my first suit from 2007. 14 years of good and loyal service. I was working in the, in the show business, so I was not in a very formal business setting. So I, I had the environment to try it and said to me, you have to try double-breasted. And for me, uh, back in these years, I said, well, what are you talking about double-breasted? Is it for old people? You know, we have this kind of strange idea of uh, this banker with a little bit of belly in the 1980s, at least in Europe, wearing this big double-breasted, you know, I had this str strange idea. And of course, I followed his advice. It became my first double-breasted. And from that very moment, I was literally obsessed with anything double-breasted, whether it be a double-breasted suit, double-breasted sport jacket, or even double-breasted vest, because I pushed it very far. So, what I also know is that many of you, specifically people who are starting their fantastic, this beautiful journey, many of you have asked me that you're still confused with the semantic and with the way we speak, because sometimes people say, ah, Mr. Jacome, I'm a little bit confused. What do you call a six on two? a six on one, a four on one. What, what does it mean, all these figures? We, we don't want to do mathematics, we want to dress up. I'm gonna re-explain and re-clarify what we mean by these numbers and take advantage of that to explain a few other things so that you can understand, and if you have in your plans a double-breasted, uh, you can choose the one that will be the best for you. Or at least I can give you some guidance or even better, some inspiration. First of all, one thing to understand, when we speak about six on two or six on one or four on one, the first number, the first figure, we say figure, darling, or number? Either. Either. So the first number uh, describes the number of buttons you see on the jacket. It's very easy. So for example, this jacket has one, two, three, four, five, six buttons, okay? Then the second number, uh, is describing the number of buttons that are active, that you can use to button your jacket, okay? So easy to remember. The first number is the number, uh, just the number of buttons you see on the jacket, and the second number is the number of the buttons who are active, that you can use to button your jacket, or you can potentially use it. And this is where the subtlety of the sartorial art is kicking in when you uh, decide to button or to unbutton a certain number of buttons. I will show you. So let's start with the beginning, as usual. And this is, here you have a wonderful, beautiful, classic, uh, double-breasted by my friend Gaetano Aloisio in Rome. Fabulous bespoke tailor, good man, very good friend of us. Uh, I made this suit, I would say, four or five years ago with him in Rome. Uh, it's made by, by, uh, with a beautiful Drago Super 160. I love this uh, fabric with a kind of a soft and dry hand at the same time, extremely nice with a very subtle line. So this one is the classic six on two. That is to say, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And immediately you notice that you can button this one, but you can also button this one. Okay, so it means six and with two active. This is why we call them six and two. Okay, there's a debate. Personally, I prefer to wear it like that, with the last button unbuttoned and only using the middle button. Some people uh, who are um, people who are admirers of um, Cary Grant, Clark Gable, Jimmy Stewart, Gary Cooper. Uh, I am an admirer of these people. Fred Astaire and the cinema from Frank Capra, John Ford, Howard Oaks, all these enormous names. When you look at those films, most of the time, the Hollywood star were wearing with the uh, two, um, all the buttons buttoned, that is to say the, the two buttons buttoned. Uh, well, that's, the, that's a debate between experts. Personally, I still prefer to wear it like that. Okay, the story goes that uh, back in the years, I was the king of England who was a little bit too fat, and uh, he had some... <clears throat> 
belly, I don't know if it was because of beer or wine or too much food, whatever, too much comfort, but he had belly, and so he was unable to button his last button, and so he became the fashion um, to not button your last button. So you see sometimes <laughs> the style history is full of very surprising stories. Anyway, it's a matter of personal taste. Personally, I prefer to not button the last button, but you can potentially do it. So this is, once again, remember, six on two, six button visible and two button possibly button. Okay, that's very clear. And so now we can move. That, that's the most classic one. If you want to start uh, your double breasted journey, start with a six on two. It's, the, it's a, always a safe bet and in any kind of business setting is extremely elegant. The only thing that you have to remember when you are choosing a double breasted is that Okay, a single breasted jacket, even if the cut is not exactly right, you can still, you know, make it work by opening it, by, you know, I mean, it's, it's a little bit easier if it's not exactly your size, if it's of the peg, uh, you can make it, or it's the, the jacket of your grandfather, I don't know, you can make it work. A double breasted is much more complex. It has to be cut perfectly because if it's not really well cut and adjusted to your silhouette, it can become, it can have the reverse effect and become a sartorial catastrophe. So always remember when you are, if you want to go on the double breasted path, be very precise with your tailor or your made to measure salon about the cut and no compromise on the cut. Otherwise, you're missing your target. But if the cut is well, of course, it's tremendously elegant immediately. Then, if you're a little bit more seasoned, you can go to the next major figure of the double breasted, which is the six on one. So you understand now how we work? Six buttons, two, four, six. But on this very model by Chiffonelli in Paris, only one can be buttoned. You see the difference between this one, you can button the second and the third. This one, you can only button this one. And you see immediately what it makes as a difference that the, the opening, the, the, this V is much, much deeper here, you know, than there. This is crossing higher, this is crossing lower. And of course, it creates this immense roll. Okay, well, this is one of my suits, you know, I have a weak spot for large lapels, but it makes this really interesting role with the lapel that you can't have with a six on two. But at the same time, it's less classic. It's a little bit more daring, and it's a little bit more, you have to pull it off, really. You have to feel comfortable in it. This is more like an Italian figure, normally, the six on one, but this one is a Parisian one. Uh, I adore six on one personally because I'm wearing a lot of them but it's something it's the second step of the double breasted ladder if you start start with a six on two if you feel like a little bit more confident you can go to a six on one and you see the difference it's a little bit more daring and with a little I, would, I was about to say with a little bit of French flair, but it can be also Italian flair and it can be also British flair. Although uh, British, I think they are do much less six on ones than we French and even less than Italian, where the six on one is probably the most um, uh, common uh, double breasted suit uh, in Italy. Now we move precisely to Italy and I change camera. Am I on the right one? I am. And uh, so here we have what we call, so it's easy, four on one. You see, four buttons, one, two, three, four. And you can see that only one can be buttoned. Okay, but as we are in Italy, and specifically at Sartoria dal Cuore in Napoli, the south of Italy, uh, Italian, they never do anything like uh, others. This is why we love them, and this is why precisely they are Italian. So this one is a four-on-one, classic, but uh, Gigi Dal Quarry on this one, make a little twist, he put on, he, he took the time to <laughs> put in the roll to sew. Uh, I always have a problem with to sew. Uh, in, I ask, Sonia is here, she's trying not to speak, but I have to check my English with her from time to time. To sew a buttonhole, this, this takes time. And, and you said, but why do you do that? Is it useful? Can you, can you use it? Actually, you could, but it's not really beautiful. No, we don't use it. And it's precisely because it is useless that we love it. And uh, this is this kind of small detail which are purely aesthetic. 
That is to say, the buttonhole could potentially work, but we prefer not to use it because it's our little, okay, some people will say it's a little bit snub. Well, it's not more snub than having a, choosing a specific color of your next car or putting a little bit of leather inside your car. Everybody like that. You understand this small detail that makes your life better that makes you feel a little bit more elegant and you know that. So I love this little detail here on this. This is um, um, on this lapel. This is a, the fabric is a very, so it's an Italian interpretation of a very um, um, thick, and um, it's a winter fabric by the famous uh, fabric brand called Wilbill. Uh, people who are into uh, the fabric, they will understand what I'm talking about. It's, you know, it's almost bulletproof. That's a real serious winter suit, but with a Napolitan interpretation. Uh, so, remember, if you start, start with a six and two, and then you can go up the ladder little by little. But if you feel comfortable to go directly to a four on one, let's go, my friends. You know, when I say you should... Uh, start with a six and two. I don't say you have to. If you feel it's all a matter of being, feeling comfortable with yourself. If you think you can pull off directly a very strong pattern on, on the four on one with a Napolitan thing, uh, Napolitan uh, buttonhole in the roll, let's go for it. Sartorial, uh, the sartorial path it has to remain a joy. Uh, I advise you to go slowly, but if you feel confident, go for it directly. Uh, can't not mention. Uh, if you looked, if you watched the first episode that was dedicated to the single-breasted suit, you remember those two jackets were uh, on display. Why? Because they are beautiful jackets with only one button. And I explained to you why I only put one button, because I normally uh, use them uh, open, because there's a double-breasted vest just under. I don't know if you see it well. Okay, so this one is beautiful. Both are about Chiffonelli. I adore double-breasted vest, I think it adds something really different. So this one is a double-breasted vest, and you see there's no lapel. This is the classic one uh, that is done by Chiffonelli in Paris. Same thing. Normally, you, you leave the last one unbuttoned. Well, I say normally. It's just a convention, but you can also button it. Me, well, to be honest, it depends. And I, I can't even explain to you why it depends, but sometimes I leave it open. Sometimes I prefer to button it. It's a purely a matter of taste. And then we have this one. So you see the difference between those two. This one is notch lapel. And Sonia was just telling me that uh, it's probably one of the most reasonable lapels I have in my wardrobe because, um, as you know, if you follow us, I like large lapels. Uh, this one is well proportioned. Actually, it's a beautiful suit. And then you go to the last one. This is same thing, one button, double-breasted vest, but with a pick lapel, but look inside, I went as far as to annoy my tailor to ask him to do a pick lapel also on the vest, which is kind of a rare thing to see. You don't find this in ready to wear, and even in made to measure, you have to go bespoke to that. Why did I ask him to do a pick lapel also on the vest, which is a which is a double-breasted vest, as you can see. Same thing, I don't button the last one, or I button it, it doesn't matter. Uh, is that, but sometimes I like to, to drop my jacket and work into my, with only with my vest on it, and I think it's super chic. Okay, the purists will say, you never wear a vest without a jacket, it's against the rules. Well, you know what, I don't care about your rules. Sometimes I'm, I feel very confident. I think, by the way, I, I think I recorded I don't think, I'm sure, I recorded an episode of Sartorial Talks, I don't remember if it was in French or in English or both, without a jacket, because it was an episode on shirts, and I, I took the opportunity to wear only this vest, and I like the feeling of it. It feels really comfortable and elegant. So, once again, uh, here nothing is innocent in this. Um, organization of the mannequins behind me. You go from the most classic to the most daring. This is the sartorial ladder, six on one, six on two, sorry, very classic, six on one, four on one, and then two single-breasted three-piece suit with uh, a double-breasted vest, one without lapels and one with peak lapels. 
This is what I wanted to share. We can go on for hours and hours and hours showing you all the subtleties, the details, but I leave this for future episodes of Sutorial Talks. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, to comment, and if you want to support our show, to visit our Patreon page. That was my 15 seconds of promotion, and I give you an appointment to the next episode of Sotorio Talks. In the meantime, take care, be safe, and have fun. Bye-bye, my friends.